I love long tail motors. My brother gave me this four horsepower that had the drive on the power head broken. So I welded a socket inside and ground a hex on the shaft. Replaced the impeller, cleaned the carburetor. Okay, we're out at the sea. Haven't gonna do a test, but it's super windy and it's been raining on and off, but uh, we'll do our best to video. Sorry about the wind noise. It is so horrendously windy. Not the good day for doing this. Look at the chop. if you wanted to have a go but you don't you do not want to have a go no. nah uh, the weather was so horrendous out there it was all choppy so we're gonna try in the river in the river it wouldn't play it wasn't running properly and started thinking why don't you make a lightweight long tail motor okay so this is the still 088 Magnum. This is like uh, the biggest chainsaw you could buy, or at least it used to be. I think it still is. So I got this exactly like this for free. The clutch is missing, top cover is missing, no bar on it, and it was running really bad. Um, I've used it in a few videos until it got harder and harder to start, but now it's running good. So I moved the uh, ignition coil further out, and it's running good now. So let's make a long tail out of this, but I've got to take it apart. There we go, it's compact, lightweight, powerful, just like EcoFlow. It's a video sponsor. So here I'm running the grinder off it, cut this pipe. I've had this for a while now and every time I work outside I use it and I use it for charging things as well. It'd be great for any sort of off-grid setup. Of power. This is the River 2 Max. There's a whole river series. Uh, this is the middle of the range one. That used about 5% of the battery cutting through that, which is quite a big task on a grinder. They draw a lot of power. Got to plug back into the solar panel, so I'm gaining power back. You can bend the solar panel to get just the right angle to the sun, which is terrible this time of year. Gaining about 50 watts of charge. When the sun comes out strong, it can get 160 watts. And there we go, we're back up to 100% already, even in this week sun. So you got the uh, USB outlets, you can charge your phones and stuff, and GoPros, two power points, and you've got 12 volt out too. That's like a cigarette lighter thing. So this is available in New Zealand and Australia now with our plug sockets at uh, 240 volt, link in the description. All right, nothing streams the great outdoors, like a bit of gaming. Got a few things charging here. So I brought this boat a little while ago and we're going to do a big overnight stay out in the harbour with the EcoFlow, it's going to be great. Uh, I can't do it now because it's raining on and off constantly, that's why everything's so wet. So if I move these panels around I can get enough charge that you can just play that forever and it won't go flat. Got a bit more work to do but I'm really looking forward to that video. It comes with this good case and clips you can actually use to prop the solar panel to face the sun better. Uh, yeah, no sun. Back on the build I'm making a plate to mount the long tail coupler out of a 5mm aluminium plate. There are a lot of different holes and shapes, as there's not many good mounting locations on the chainsaw. The black plastic part you see is to hold the carburetor. 
As it is a diaphragm type, it needs to be rubber mounted to minimise vibration. I drew it in Fusion 360 in two parts to fit on my Ender 3 3D printer. Alright. Printer's done a pretty good job of these parts. This is a test print with a uh, very low infill. Let's lift it up a little bit here. But already we've got a clash going on here. Oh yeah, that should go on there when I find the bolts. Okay, I need this to go on here, but this is male and this is male also. I needed this to identify as female, so I'll go take it to the changing machine. Alright, I'm showing a lot of the details more than usual of the machining parts. So I hope it doesn't get too boring. I face this off, center drill it. Then a 12 mm right through. Then a 19 mm halfway through and need to take out another O. 5mm to make it 3 quarter inch. Machine the outside to 25mm to fit the thrust bearing. It's just a ball bearing. Then I cut the slot and I cut some keyed steel. Fit it to the motor, pack the key in place. And weld it off. Grind it back and machine it round. Dumb idea, now it doesn't fit. Then I can't be bothered making another one, so I decide to fix it. That shrunk quite a bit where I welded it, so I had to split it at the back so it would go on there. So where I'm up to now is that's got to go there, that's got to go there, that's got to go over top of all that, that's got to go there, and then that has got to go in there. Let's make all that happen. I drill a 35mm hole through and open up room for the bearing. Then I turn this part around, use parallels to space it off the chuck. and face it and cut a big chamfer on it. This pipe goes inside and I want to make an interference fit 35.02 millimeter. Then drill the inside to 30 to fit the long tail pipe. I set up the dividing head to drill the mounting boss. Six holes, this makes it super easy. I just turn it to 60 degrees at a time. First with the spot drill, then go through with five millimeter. I line everything up and drill through. This drill press has a tapping function, it reverses at a depth that you set. Oh yeah, perfect. 
This boss is actually a cast alloy, but it seems to weld okay. The holes in the plate get opened out to 6.1mm. And I'll make one more mount. So this is going to be the setup here. Got a little propeller I can trim and modify to make work. So I've changed up and made a new and improved uh, carburetor mount here. That'll be much better and it's printed solider too. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.